So hi, welcome to this session. Uh, I will talk to you about sustainable observability from bare metal to a Kubernetes world. Um, and I really enjoy to talk about this. So first, who am I? So I'm freelance at Serenity, it's my own company. I'm a consultant, mainly working on architecture, platform automation, and time series. Um, I use a TIG and tech platform since for, for five years now, starting with InfluxDB 0.9.x. So it starts to be old. Uh, I'm the Influx Ace for France since last year. Uh, and during this, uh, I'm the host of the Paris Time Series Meetup, uh, which you can find a which you can find on ptsm.io. And I'm also the co-host of the Big Data Ebdo podcast, uh, in which we speak about um, big data, of course, but also uh, cloud technologies uh, and time series. Uh, so the last the meetup and the podcast are in French. So feel free to join if you wish, uh, but it's in French. So um, now, we can start with some principles and why I use a TIG and TIG stack. So first, how did, I get that? how did I get there? So at the beginning, so five years ago, I, need, I had some home sensors and I wanted to have uh, some custom metrics with it about temperature, humidity, and so on. Um, I wanted a best of breed platform. I wanted, of course, nice, nice UI and dashboards and of course, ready to, um, a ready to use platform. I could have built it on my own, like uh, doing some Python and PostgreSQL and so on and forth, but uh, I didn't want to spend too much time on this. So I wanted also a Python API and to be compatible with Raspberry Pi. So this way I built some RM version of um, Telegraph and of InfluxDB and Grafana a long time ago. And uh, as I was quite happy with it, I extended to platform monitoring. Uh, for people like host and uh, instead of using some uh, tools such as uh, Zabbix and so on because it was more like user friendly and it was just working well with few resources. Um, so about monitoring, so I, I principle on it is to have monitoring outside of the platform, meaning that I want just to have some small agent um, on the server side and which will push metrics to a central platform. Uh, so for this, I will use Telegraph to collect and send metrics to InfluxDB, uh, both one and two versions. So, so, so to be able to compare them and, um, and get used to the new version. Um, so I was more keen on push mechanism. Uh, so that's so each server will push uh, metrics to these instances and I use uh, since the beginning, so more Grafana for alerting and visualizing, because at that time, uh, Chronograph was not as uh, powerful as today. Um, also, my point was that I want to monitor di uh, different things, being like a uh, Kubernetes cl cluster, being traditional servers, or more like IoT platforms. So it was really uh, a nice way to, to build my monitoring platform. Of course, it's a journey. Um, so it means like I don't have the single truth uh, and not the final one. It's still work in progress on to some extent. And uh, so it's really like to show how I pro progress uh, over the last years. And uh, you have to make your, your own opinion on this. Um, so <laughs> now, so let's start with um, how I started with bare metal servers and how I went to containers. This way, so um, you can, uh, on bare metal server, it's really easy to use an abuse of telegraph configuration. You just have to put your files in the slash etc slash telegraph slash telegraph d and in which I put all my input and output plugins for uh, telegraph. And you can really automate it automate uh, this uh, with, uh, with uh, infrastructure, infrastructure as code tool, tooling, such as Ansible. And doing this, so I just have to flag my servers, being like uh, if you have a Postgres server, so it will deploy the Postgres configuration, configuration file and so on. And it's really uh, an easy way so to compute um, 
telegraph configuration uh, based on your needs. So doing this, it was really easy to have host, host and application matrix uh, uh, in an easy way and to push them to, so to influx and visualize them later on. But then a few years later, so Docker came in and when you start to deploy containers, you lose visibility on what happens within your containers by default. Uh, if you have a uh, telegraph on host side only. Of course, there is a Docker input plugin, but it will provide you only a general metrics, like a memory, CPU, network, health check, and so on. But you will lose what happens within your applications. Like, uh, so you can see that, for example, you have a Postgres uh, container, how it works well or not, but you will not see queries, statistics, and metrics. As you, use, as you used to have before. So one solution is to ask Telegraph in your Docker um, environment and doing this just like in Docker, in a Docker Compose file, you can just add Telegraph as you see on the left um, and for which, and doing this you have metrics back again, uh, but it's not a perfect solution. Um, just before adding Telegraph, I forgot to mention that um, when, you are, when you have Telegraph on host only, you could uh, fetch metrics on your services, but it will, you will need to expose uh, ports from some, uh, from your, for your services. And it would just be the mess to manage. So for me, it's uh, easier to build, to bundle Telegraph within uh, the application. And doing so, you have um, a consistent approach, like for your service, like here, your next cloud um, deployment, you have all what, all what you need and all the related configuration. And of course, you're monitoring with the Telegraph service and the um, configuration also. But doing this, it's not really the perfect solution because for example, you will have some and you will have some service metrics, like what happens in your Nginx server, what happens in your Postgres and so on. But some metrics will still be available only uh, at the host level, like for volumes, uh, for example. And there are some services for which you can't get metrics, like if you need a socket, or if you need uh, more local uh, access. So you can be a mess. But doing, adding Telegraph to your application, uh, we will see later that it's a new pattern uh, which will be useful later in the, uh, when we consider Kubernetes. So um, now we could see that um, it was quite easy to, to deploy Telegraph when you are on bare metal server. We could see that uh, within containers, we can also te deploy Telegraph to fetch metrics. So now let's see uh, what we can do uh, when we go to Kubernetes. So first, what does it mean to monitoring in a Kubernetes world? You want to have metrics about your nodes. Uh, you want to know if your masters and worker nodes are working as expected. You also need to uh, monitor Kubernetes core services. Uh, by core services, I mean like everything like etcd, core DNS, the network, plugin, and so on. Um, and you will, of course, you want to monitor your application as you are used to, and you want to monitor the related Kubernetes resources. Like for example, uh, for your application, you need to monitor your services, your um, persistent volume claims, and so on. So yeah, um, that's all you want to monitor. Uh, when we speak about monitoring in a Kubernetes world, uh, of course, there is Prometheus, which is also a CNCF project, and which is a de facto standard within the um, Kubernetes world. Uh, the whole ecosystem relies on Prometheus exporters, uh, which is a way to export metrics for applications. And so there is also the Prometheus operator, which will provide you all the node metrics, the core service metrics I mentioned before, you can um, provide your application metrics as long as you deploy the service monitor objects, which will in fact inform Prometheus uh, where they can find metrics uh, to fetch. Uh, you have the Grafana dashboards, uh, so you will need with built-in dash with um, native built-in uh, dashboards like uh, about your nodes and about the pods and deployment and so on. 
but not your application. You have to build your own. And of course, you have the LF manager and the Prometheus uh, UI uh, that you can use to fetch uh, and query your data. So the obvious question is, why not just choose Prometheus? <laughs> you, will, you should say. Uh, first, the um, first uh, reason is I already have Telegraph in Flux and Grafana, and I'm really happy with it. I don't want to have a new tool or a dedicated tool for Kubernetes monitoring. Um, there is a question of the long-term storage. Um, Prometheus is not really built for long-term storage, even if some projects like Cortex uh, appear uh, the last year. Uh, it's not really I'd say useful for me because it's too complex uh, for my needs. Uh, I was also wondering about analytics, like uh, what if I want to, if I want to have some analytics on my monitoring, but uh, I need to have some data and I need also to be able to, um, um, to compute data and to apply uh, some mathematical formula and so on. And you can't really do this with um, Prometheus. And also the last point is that I didn't want to, uh, to deploy my monitoring, my monitoring solution within the cluster um, as it will consume resources. And I prefer that these resources are available for applications. And also I didn't want to enable pool monitoring from outside the cluster uh, for security reasons. So the question then is, can we get the same um, dashboards and monitoring and metrics uh, with the uh, TIG and TIG stack. Uh, so spoiler, the answer is yes. Uh, but before diving, we, there's a few um, points to have in mind. So when I started for the, to prepare this talk some uh, weeks and months ago, I started by just trying to copycat uh, the Prometheus operator dashboards and it was not the right way to do in fact. You you have to question yourself about uh, do you want or do we have the exact the same data or just something similar? Um, and you just just trying to duplicate a primitive operator dashboard is not the right way to do because you should better question your needs and the existing dashboards. And at the end, um, even if you can be frustrated to say, I cannot do the same, exactly the same dashboards, you, in fact, you should say, okay, I just need this, and for this, I can build them. And of course, uh, available metrics may depend on your Kubernetes provider. Uh, that means, like, for example, on OVH Cloud, for volumes, they use a Cinder uh, CSI driver, which does not provide metrics yet. So when I started in, um, using uh, Telegraph for uh, node metrics, I didn't have any information about volume. At the beginning, I say, okay, there is a bug. Uh, it's a pity. <laughs> but when I compare, when I deployed Prometheus to compare, I saw it was not um, Prometheus at the same issue. Uh, diving further, I could identify that just the CSI driver does not report metrics yet. And so I could go further and see, okay, I don't have stats for volumes, but I can go on with all, all of the dashboards. There is no issue with um, Telegraph to fetch metrics. So first point, um, as we said before, we want to have global and then metrics. And how you can do this, you just have to, uh, to deploy um, Telegraph as a demand set within your cluster and you will be able to fetch uh, so core services, your, uh, your uh, metrics about your containers and metrics about your nodes. But to do this now, we, when I started back uh, some months ago, uh, there was no end chart about this. There, were no, there was an old repository uh, with an old end chart which did this, but was not uh, um, to date. And the new M chart did not provide this. So I started by contributing this M chart. So the Telegraph uh, DS1, uh, which works and now, and provide all the metrics you need for uh, global and non metrics. Okay, so it's a mix of traditional plugins uh, like um, disk, system, uh, CPU, memory, and so on. 
and the Kubernetes input plugin, which will provide you metrics about namespace, about pods, about containers, and everything which, are, which is related to them, like your memory, CPU, and so on. So you can have a good um, knowledge about what happened within your nodes. Um, the configuration is not is so far is quite strict. It's like an opinionated default configuration. So there is no way so far to extend it, but it should be good enough uh, to to provide all the metrics you need. So now, so with this, we have so global and metrics. Now we can see how we can have uh, application metrics. Oh, no, first, uh, so here is a tool dashboard so in Grafana um, that I built with uh, the data from Telegraph. Uh, so on the top left, you have some global synthesis about my cluster. Um, so you can see memory usage, CPU, uh, memory consumption per namespace. Uh, it then it's, you have the same pair pod and so on. Uh, and on the bottom right, uh, you have uh, more nodes uh, view uh, with all the same metrics like your CPU, load average, memory, and so on uh, that you can build. So it's not really the same uh, dashboard as the Prometheus one, but they are really close to, to this one. Uh, let's check. Uh, yep, that's I said. Um, so a few metrics are different between what Prometheus provide and what uh, Telegraph um, provides. So you just have to adjust some queries or to change a little bit the logic, but you can get almost the same. And you can of course extend uh, your dashboard with uh, the one you need. So now back to application metrics. Uh, there is a Telegraph Elm chart for this. Um, so you will de deploy uh, Telegraph as a deployment. Uh, you can deploy it within a namespace and uh, fetch metrics about all what happened within this namespace. You could have a, have a, like a, a more cluster view um, to say, okay, I, I deploy Telegraph in this namespace, but it will fetch metrics from everywhere. But maybe the best option is to have a per namespace or per application um, uh, configuration or strategy so that it will fetch all uh, a given configuration as Telegraph will fetch all the metrics for a namespace or for an application. It will fetch volumes, you can fetch everything about Pods, deployment, demand set, status, stateful set, and also services. Uh, for this, you will use the Cube Inventory plugin, uh, which will give you some information about the state of the resources. Like, uh, is your service up, or is it pending, or is it um, uh, failing, for example? Uh, the same for volumes. It will provide you, so you have a, a global overview of the state of your application in a namespace. Uh, you have the Prometheus input plugin you can use, which will be able to, um, to fetch uh, metrics from Prometheus um, exporters. And you have all the traditional input plugins for your services. Like if you use Postgres, you can use the Postgres input plugin. Uh, you just have to configure it and it will get metrics as you have on a bare metal server, for example. Um, and in this context, uh, the Telegraph configuration file is a config map. You could maybe split it um, to reproduce the configuration I mentioned at the beginning, like uh, having one configuration for each input and output plugin. But it, it might not be the best way to start with, uh, as you have to, say, to gather all the config map at the end. So maybe a single config map is easy to start with. So now we have metrics. We saw also with that we have node and global metrics. Um, so we could see, we could think that we have everything, but uh, we could go, we can go further um, with the telegraph operator, which is um, which has an alpha status right now. And so the chart is also with an alpha status. Um, the idea behind the Telegraph operator is that I will deploy a Telegraph container as a sidecar, as a sidecar 
is in your pod, um, meaning that, um, uh, for example, you will deploy your Nginx instance, and along with your Nginx instance, you will have the Telegraph container. And the Telegraph container, in this context, you will pass configuration with, through some classes. So it's uh, an object that was built for this purpose. Uh, when you have your Nginx, um, when you define your Nginx deployment, uh, you will pass annotations. And these annotations, we, you will say that you want um, a sidecar to be, a telegraph sidecar to be added in the context. And you will also define the class uh, you want to use. So the class, in fact, will be the configuration file uh, you expect to happen to this um, pod. Um, I think the telegraph operator is quite interesting for what I call non-service metrics like uh, something which does not listen on the networks or which does not um, expose metrics uh, with the Prometheus uh, exporters. Uh, for example, I expect to have maybe volumes uh, do, uh, this way, or maybe you can connect to a socket. Uh, so for everything which is not, let's say, network related, and for which you cannot use the telegraph deployment we saw before, uh, it will be interesting. Uh, however, you have to take care about the Telegraph proliferation because even if Telegraph does not consume too many resources uh, on an on a, um, individual basis, uh, it will, um, if you deploy a Telegraph instance with each of your pods, at the end it can, it can start consuming a lot of resources that, and you don't want to, to say to devote resources just for Telegraph for all the Telegraph instances. And uh, also you have to take care that um, when you when metrics are sent to your uh, destination, whether it's uh, InfluxDB or something else, you may, not, you may not need that every instance will send metrics at the same time. So for do and don'ts uh, with Telegraph configuration, I recommend you to uh, check out the um, Telegraph tool belt uh, talk uh, made by David McKay. Uh, you can find it on YouTube. It was last, maybe in last year, or it was uh, in the last influx days uh, about it. And that's it. Uh, yep. So, um, till now, we just focus on how we fetch metrics uh, from different um, sources. Um, and now we want to vis visualize them. So even if I showed you some dashboard I built on Grafana side, uh, let's see what we can do on InfluxDB2 uh, side. So there is, um, with, if you know Chronograph, uh, you know that you have built-in dashboards. And with InfluxDB2, there is an extension of this uh, with um, InfluxDB uh, community templates. So, which is really a young and promising initiative started a few weeks or months ago. The idea is that as we can deploy packages uh, and we can provide dashboard as code uh, to InfluxDB2, we can provide so uh, ready, to, ready to use dashboards. So, a company named Benitu.io provided Kubernetes dashboards, uh, which, in, which so relies on the Kubernetes plugin we mentioned before, and you can find them on the GitHub and uh, repo. And in this repo, you have a lot of um, different um, dashboards for like MySQL and so on. Uh, but, um, and so far, so it can provide you so this kind of metrics of the dashboard, sorry. Uh, like on the top left, you have the um, node metrics for GCP uh, nodes. Uh, with uh, some explanation, you can see, so you can watch the number of nodes and of metrics about CPU and so on. And on the bottom right, you have the Kubernetes inventory based uh, dashboard that will um, so give you the state of your demon set of your res different resources within a namespace. Um, so these dashboards are quite young and should improve over time. But it's really a nice uh, way to start with. You just have to use influx package and import the, the YAML files, and you have ready to use dashboards uh, within uh, InfluxDB2. 
but is there a third way? Uh, when I started this, to prepare this talk, uh, my point was to use either Prometheus or either um, Telegraph. And uh, at some times, uh, uh, I noticed that maybe there could be a way using both uh, tools. Maybe for, from the Prometheus operator, we could use only the node exporter and cube state metrics, which will provide you um, um, metrics in a Prometheus format. But uh, you could use the Telegraph to collect all the, these metrics uh, with the Prometheus input plugin. Doing this, you, if you really expect to have the Prometheus metrics, you can fetch them without installing the whole uh, Prometheus stack. And you can still rely on Telegraph to fetch metrics and push them to uh, wherever you want. Yep, still, okay, still time. So next steps and take away to conclude. Um, the first one, the next step for me is to explore deeper in FluxDB2. Uh, as it's still, so it's beta 10 right now. Um, even if I push data for, so on both in FluxDB1 and FluxDB2, uh, I, it's more like a um, sandbox to evaluate in FluxDB2 for me. Uh, I don't rely too much yet on this version, which is still a beta version. And what I really like in this version is the ability to dissociate alerting and from dashboards. So I really love Grafana, but um, you have any, you guys, there is an issue for me in Grafana that is to say, if you have dashboards, you have either generic dashboards with variables and which can be really uh, powerful, either you have some specific or dedicated dashboards to some hosts without using variables, and then you can have alerting. Uh, you, can, you can't have alerting when you use variables. Uh, so you have to build as many dashboards as you need for your alerts. Uh, when with the InfluxDB2, it's possible to dissociate the two uh, with tasks on one side for alerting and dashboard on the other side. So I hope to it to be more flexible for my needs. And um, as I said before, so the Telegraph operator is still alpha version right now. And I expect to explore deeper uh, to confirm my hypothesis on volumes, for example, and, uh, and on maybe on other metrics I can fetch um, using uh, this, this uh, operator instead of the generic deployment. Um, take away uh, a few of them. So I, uh, I hope you show that it's possible to monitor a Kubernetes platform with Telegraph uh, and that you don't need to deploy Prometheus uh, as a whole stack within your cluster. Um, I, you should have seen that we can leverage Prometheus exporters and rely on the whole ecosystem, uh, but use Telegraph with a Prometheus input plugin to get all your metrics and to send them wherever you want. Um, there is maybe a good solution by doing a mix of Prometheus operator and Telegraph to have best of both worlds when you need. And of course, that uh, it should be interesting to watch the progress of the Telegraph operator. Uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the, um, the talk. Uh, if you have questions, we, there should be a Slack. Uh, for the Q and A, um, or you can find me on the uh, Influx Data Slack, and I would be happy to answer all your questions um, when you need. And up here we go, and where you can find me and all the links useful uh, to to find me on the web. Thanks for watching.